Hi everybody, welcome to our channel. Today I wanted to make a video on citizenship application. I'm going to talk about seven tips on how to prepare your citizenship application to ensure that it's processed smoothly and that it's approved. Tip number one, make sure that you have all the right to require documentation. So there are certain documents on the document checklist which might take a couple of weeks or a couple of months to get. So make sure you have those before you apply. For example, right now, if you have lived in certain, um, for a certain number of time outside of Canada during the eligibility period of your citizenship application, you do need to provide a police clearance. And sometimes that takes some time. So make sure you look at that before you start um, preparing and finalizing your application. Tip number two, correct calculations for your citizenship residency requirement. So right now, the law in order to become a Canadian citizen is you have to spend three years out of the last five years in Canada physically. Uh, in your application, there are forms that you have to fill out. So make sure that the dates that you write are the correct dates. I always advise clients who become permanent residents uh, up until the time that they're going to apply for citizenship to keep an Excel sheet with all of your ins and outs of Canada uh, with the dates, a proper calendar system, and also keep a uh, record of all your flight confirmations, uh, boarding passes, um, and any other uh, evidence you have that can show your travels. Because even if you do indicate on your forms certain dates, it doesn't necessarily mean that the officer is going to believe you. So if you've traveled a lot and if your, your days are very tight and there's other concerns in your file, the officer can scrutinize your application and then send you what's called a residence questionnaire or send you a letter with questions about um, where have you been? Oh, you said you were traveling here. Do you have any evidence? Can you show me that you actually left? Can you show me that you're actually in Canada? Do you have anything to prove to me that you're in Canada for, for all this time? So sometimes immigration might ask for healthcare records or exit and entry records or bank statements or any document that shows that you're actually living in Canada. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people that lie in their applications. Uh, so because of that, officers uh, have to do their job. Uh, so they have to make sure that the people that are applying for Canadian citizenship actually meet the days. So make sure you include your correct calculation and that you have a backup as a sheet with an explanation um, and, and your evidence that you're keeping just in case there's a citizenship interview or a hearing that takes place or you get send a letter that asks you for further evidence. If you provide everything and the officer is satisfied, then your application is going to be approved. Tip number three, language requirements. Make sure that before you apply, you make sure that um, if you do need to take a test for your citizenship, um, that you do take the test. Sometimes that could take a couple of weeks to schedule and then to obtain the results. So you need that in order to apply for your application. Tip number four, once your application is ready to go, don't send it by regular mail. Always make sure you send it by uh, courier, um, FedEx or Post Canada. I, I prefer FedEx over Post Canada because FedEx has more, uh, they guarantee the days and um, Whereas Post Canada, even if they say one or two days, it could take three to four days. Uh, and with a signature, either Post Canada or FedEx or any other career company that you trust. Um, because if you do send it by re regular mail, it can get lost. It's a big package. It's an important document. And also there's no, it could get lost in immigration um, mm -hmm. in their offices. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen sometimes. And it can be very frustrating because you could file your application. Immigration holds on to it for many months um, or finds it months later or you submitted it and then you don't hear anything you can't contact them they just tell you you know general information on the website says it could take this long and then eventually later on you find out that maybe you didn't even receive it but if you do send it by registered mail or courier then there's a track you have a tracking number you have someone that signed for it so if they say that they can't find it for some reason you can say well no actually you do have it and, uh, and then they can look into it further um tip number five uh, once you have filed your application, immigration is going to correspond with you many times uh, when they're processing it. So always make sure that you verify your mail and your email. Uh, if you have a lawyer on file, usually your lawyer gets everything. But even if you do have a lawyer on file, sometimes they can still send you uh, send email to the client to you directly. Um, sometimes, usually nowadays, they communicate more by email, uh, but sometimes they do send it by mail as well. So always make sure you check your emails, your spam folders, your, your mail at home, um, because if you do miss uh, the letters, and in citizenship, 
they kind of they can give you timelines pretty quickly. You can get a letter that says you have to come to your test in the next week or in two weeks, and then you can get a letter that says you have a citizenship interview next week or you have your old ceremony next week. And if you're traveling or you're not checking your mail, um, then you can the days can pass very fast and then you missed everything. So you have to send letters, ask if you can do it again, and that could delay everything. Um, another place to check also is online. Uh, immigration has an online status portal where you can go in and check the status of your application for different apps. Not all applications have this. Most applications have it. Citizenship has it for citizenship applications. As lawyers at our office, we check that, but we don't rely on that because we find that it's not always updated information. So sometimes we may have gotten a letter, uh, maybe our client has already become a citizen, and then if you go online, it says we have received your application, it's processing. It's not the best system for up the most updated information. So as lawyers, we don't verify that. We verify that, but we don't rely on that. But we do verify it because sometimes it has happened that a letter is sent out we never got it we even were a lawyer on file we never got it we went online and said a letter was sent on this day but we never received an email or a letter um, so then uh, you have to contact immigration and say you never sent me that usually I would say generally we get everything that immigration sent to us but the system's not perfect of course so sometimes they might send a letter by regular mail but it gets lost uh, they say they send it, but they didn't send it. Sometimes I send an email and I see it, it says sent. I call the person I send it to, they don't receive anything. Not, no junk, no spam. It happens. So check the online system at the same time as you check the, um, the email and the paper. But don't just, for example, don't only rely on the online system. And another thing with the online system is very often it will say sent letter. but the next day or the, the day after you can't be like i didn't get the letter i find usually it takes about a week sometimes a little bit more to get the letter because just because they say sent the letter doesn't mean they sent the letter on that day and immigration usually sends all the letters by regular mail so if you you know holidays and weekends and regular mail could easily take five to seven eight um, sometimes business days so just be um mindful of that um Tip number six, if you can't make your citizenship, if you have to take the test and you can't make it, or you can't make your oath ceremony, make sure you send a letter as soon as you can, asking, explaining why you can't make it, and also um, asking them to reschedule it. Usually they're pretty good at rescheduling it. Um, they won't reschedule it forever, so um, make sure you try to do it as soon as you can as possible. We've had some clients that were traveling and they weren't able to attend. So as long as you provide an explanation and you submit it with the right way and you receive it, it should, you should be able to um, reschedule. Uh, final tip, when you go to your old ceremony, uh, this is after your application has been filed and approved, make sure you come with your identity documentation. On the letter it says to bring uh, your ID and also um, that letter and also any documentation, any original documentation that you submit, that you have, um, that you use to submit your application. So uh, usually that means the letter that you received, um, your passport, original passport, uh, your PR card, uh, or your landing paper. Um, and if there's some special circumstances in your case where you had to give other documentation, original clearances or something like that, you can bring those as well. Um, very important if you are a permanent resident, you don't have your PR card, um, to bring your landing paper, which is called also a confirmation of permanent residence. Um, there's a lot of people that live in Canada that are permanent residents, but who never renewed their card because they didn't need to, they weren't traveling, but they're permanent residents because they have they've been approved and they have the confirmation of permanent residence paper or the landing paper. But if you don't have that and you're a permanent resident, it's important to apply for what's called a verification of status, which is a document you can apply online. Last time we did it at the office, took about a week or so. It's a document that says verification of status, VOS, this, this person is a permanent resident of Canada. So that kind of replaces your landing paper or your confirmation of permanent residence if you don't have it. There are a lot of people that they didn't keep that, they got landed in Canada maybe 5, 10, 20 years ago, they can't find it. But when you go to your citizenship oath ceremony, they need to identify you. Um, so if you have, if you're permanent, as a permanent resident as well. So if you don't have your PR card, you need to have landing paper, 
and if you don't have that then you need to you should apply for a verification of status document for that thank you and if you have any questions you can send us an email at info at keyorkimmigrationlaw.com